Hello everybody and welcome. Today we are going to be looking at the tournament finals that we had of the Wargaming Institute tournament. And uh, we are going to be taking a look at both. This is the first game. There were two games in total. It's a best of three game. And first we're going to be taking a look at the composition we have picked. And I'm going to be talking about why we have picked it. As you can see it's a 9 versus 10. The last player is a caster. Um, which is kind of a problem because the, he would be receiving some share of the global XP, but in the second game he switches to our team, which I guess makes it okay. Um, so first we look at, on the other team, we have Scipio Infantry, we have Cow Cow uh, Infantry, I believe, um, Kanane Archers, Boudicca Dogs, Caesar Infantry, uh, we have Hannibal Spears, Germanicus Infantry, of course, Sula Infantry, and um, Guan Yu, I believe? Nah, that's uh, the other guy. <laughs> Cavalry, my bad. And Zhuge Liang Infantry, which is the caster, so that one doesn't count. On our team, we have two swords and elephants. We've got uh, Boudicca, Boudicca Dogs, Scipio Cavalry, uh, Blinton with Germanicus Infantry, and we have Guan Yu Glaives, Caesar Infantry, uh, Leonidas Pikes, uh, Sulla Infantry, and Caesar Javelins. So without further ado, let us begin. Let us first discuss our strategy over here though. So our strategy here from this team, let us take a look at the Fog of War, without the Fog of War. So, our opponents had known that we were going to be attacking uh, Point Bravo from our semifinals. The strategy on this map is simple, is to quickly rush the top, uh, leaving a minimal forces two players in the city to defend, and then after we take Bravo we collapse onto Charlie. This, is, this might seem like a very rushy tactic, but it is actually very versatile, because if the assault on Bravo fails, it is very easy to collapse onto Charlie and capture Delta because if we are losing at Bravo, it's very likely we are going to be winning at Delta, eventually still giving us the pressure everywhere and capture the point Charlie, giving us the third point advantage. So the idea is to capture three, maximum four points and then hold them. Uh, it, there's a bit of a mind, um, mind games element going on, which is we are leaving city in a defensive position. Without further ado, let's go and continue. So we're speeding things up a bit. As you can see, our forces are moving very fast throughout the battlefield. Enemy cavalry captures the watchtower, sees what we are bringing in. Bringing in an equal force, we just don't stop and keep on moving. Let's take a look at what's going on on the rest of the battlefield. On the rest of the battlefield, we have Sol Kung using his pikes to block off the streets to Delta. One pike on every street. Well, except this one, but you know. That's why we have Lithia uh, guarding the back of Delta. And as you can see, all the units over here, completely useless. They can't do anything. Ah, but dogs, on the other hand, they can do something. During this time, we have some uh, initial setups for the Bravo. We're setting up our lines, exchanging fire. Very interesting. Looks like archers are instead prioritizing to go for the dogs. We're using our elephants to occupy the enemy archers, that way our javelins are able to spread their buffs and do their damage. As you can see, we are setting the lines and we have our first route. I have used this infantry blob to route the first unit. And the javelins are taking uh, pot shots at the enemy, dealing considerable amounts of damage. Right here, they have almost swept out an entire unit. They are kiting against the enemy archers getting some shots on those spears, and we are kind of moving our line now. This is an interesting point. Uh, here, we have pushed the enemy from a straight line into a collapsing line. It's like a rug. Uh, however, our line has been stopped 
over at this location. In the meanwhile, let's take a look at what's going on in the city. We've got some back and forth. Our pikes are holding every second that we buy at point delta we're winning. Charlie, completely irrelevant because it's not unlocked yet. But we should probably be caring about that one soon. Now Bravo is being contested. We are pushing and routing the enemy one by one. We have a bit of a hiccup over here. We have managed to push their main line back. As you can see, their spears are almost completely routed. We are attacking their healing points, so their archers and infantry are unable to heal. This is very important. Whenever you're rushing a point, you do not want your opponent to be able to heal and resupply. And so we have another route right here, which lets us take Bravo. Now, our opponent should have been kind of like pulling inside, but I have my infantry over here, which would have stopped that. And now we have these uh, dog handlers over here headed their way, and the point has been neutralized. Some of their units have managed to enter the circle. And they've been defeated. Oh, they're back again. Now, we had a huge order to block the enemy from this location. Now, it's a race to capture Bravo. In the meanwhile, Solkung has pushes to Charlie, contesting that point, preventing them from gaining any points. As you can see now, we are gaining 3.9 points per second. Well, well, we do have the point advantage. Now, we are resupplying. As you can see, we have a huge force going back to heal. For some reason, these guys are over here. Oh, they're going back to base. Makes sense. Uh, healing up. Kind of have a supply chain. It's uh, We're resupplying our units. As you can see, I sent my unit 2 from one of my uh, videos. I believe Germanicus. I've talked about this technique where I send one of my wounded units, healthy unit, on the front. Changing back so that there's always presence on the front, but still healing going on on the back. We gain some chevrons from this engagement. We've got pretty much equally matched in terms of experience. We have a slight advantage over here. On Delta, our opponents have managed to gain access to Delta, but now we're pushing them back. Let's see. Okay, let's take a look at this interaction over here. Okay, so Leonidas Pikes are fighting against the dogs. They should be able to use their uh, shield bash. Okay, so this sword infantry needs to pull back so that Leonidas Pikes are able to lower their pikes and are able to do their damage. Our pikes make a tactical decision of letting the dogs continue to hit them, which are lo uh, losing their health, and then are going to lower their pikes. But as long as the team, uh, the point D is still available, and on our side we are gaining points from that. So now we are attacking from Bravo to Charlie. Now this is another important thing, because even if Charlie is taken, the healing point is on Bravo's side, meaning our opponents will not be able to heal, and it's very easy for us to contest the, the healing point for Charlie. So if anything, this healing point becomes a trap for the enemy. Now we have lost control of it, and we are going to pay. We're going to be paying dearly for that. Our infantry going back and forth. Our Guan Yu glaives doing very good damage. Also, I'd like to point out how well the buffs are being spread. These um, glaives have their rebellion up. These units, all of them over here, have their venies up, VDs up. This cavalry, Vinny and VD. See, uh, me and the other Caesar are not standing close. I'm playing Caesar infantry because this way we're able to uh, uh, split, uh, spread our buffs. Now, that is not good enough, and we route. Over here, I guide my routed unit outside to let him recover. I, my Two of my units have been routed, and my other unit is on the way. So, Another advantage of having the supply chain is that if for some reason we do lose this line, I can just go back and recover the rest of my units very quickly, not having have to wait for any respawn timers. Now we see the archers coming in from the city after a swift recovery. Oh, Bravo is being contested, but fortunately we've got our players who are defending it. 
So now they are kind of getting pushed back on this area. We have a spear blob over here. Yeah, we have that spear blob that keeps pushing the infantry back. Now we are kind of spreading our buffs, eliminating these low numbered units because they're able to flank you very quickly and they will do as much flanking damage as a full-fledged unit so you will want to take them out as soon as possible this gives us an opportunity to support the fight that is going on at charlie delta is completely lost but that means our players are able to rotate and support our assault at charlie if charlie is taken we complete we have complete control of the outside and now we can choke our enemy within the city oh we have some very nice maneuvers from quo who is coming in to take out these archers slowly but surely very nice he charges right into them doing some pretty decent damage but his backup is on the way let's see on the charlie point we come in we realize that I realized that these units were not getting their buffs, and our strategy was all about spreading those buffs. Now this unit, is uh, their buff is on cooldown, but this unit, both the dogs and the glaives are able to get the Veni buff, which is almost as strong as an entire Vengeance at this tier. Our pikes are headed this way. We are contesting Charlie. Our opponents are do have the point advantage, but they only have 0.2 points per second uh, advantage gain over us. This is why contesting points is so important. We've got a charge on the side. Very big engagement. Bravo is empty. We've got reinforcements pouring in from there. There are quite a few mistakes here that I would like to not point out individually, which we have had analyzed earlier. I just would like to focus on the battle and the overall strategy here because of the time limitations and I would rather not go over the same footage multiple times. So we have a pretty long engagement over here. They're really stopping this infantry from coming in. But what is important is that the infantry, the fighting infantry, is doing a lot of damage on Charlie, spreading their buffs, doing their damage, doing their jobs, contesting the point. So Delta is being checked by our pikemen, who are fighting the dogs right now. They are uh, winning pretty well, because dogs are generally considered a counter to pikemen, because they do not take damage from pikes or spear phalanx. However, what they do take damage from are strikes and shield bash, which is how Leonidas pikes are able to be beat their counter. So now we have an overwhelming force at Charlie. What will, uh, what will our team do in this case? Here we have a bit of a recovery train going on. Cavalry recovers. Javelins recover. Infantry respawns. And now here I notice I lost uh, two of my units and my last unit is very low on health. I decide to call back because this means I can walk back. Check Delta. I have noticed that Delta has only two units and another one over here. This means I will be able to use my infantry to go behind the enemy or contest Delta. So now the relentless assault on Charlie has been pushed back. The situation is not looking good for us, but we still have a mild point advantage. Which keeps on shrinking. However, we are able to push the enemy from the north. So as you can see, we are about to push in from Charlie. And here's a technique from Lithia that I like to use with infantry, which is when you're fighting against a unit with low uh, model numbers, you can pull through them, activate a strike, and do tremendous damage. Now, if you do that on a high model unit, you're going to get a lot of damage from disengagement. So this is a very situational technique that Lithia demonstrates very nicely. Oh, we have a blocked cavalry charge over here. That could have done a lot of damage. And now javelins are being countered. However, javelins are still able to do their job because they're using the high grass for their advantage. Now, our team finally has managed to uh, disable the healing zone. By disable, I mean is able to attack, preventing the enemy from healing, taking position. 
they were about to heal, but nope. The javelins keep on denying that. They keep on doing damage. The enemy is disoriented. Shock and awe is the name of the game. We have additional reinforcements. The enemy has realized the javelins are doing their job and are doing tremendous amounts of damage over here. And so our infant they decide to attack with their infantry, but our infantry counters their movement. Oh, those archers are shooting at the javelins, but they're very close and an infantry manages to catch them. So our infantry is uh, controlling the battlefield, preventing the javelins from receiving any major damage. The fight on Charlie keeps on going. So now with the Bravo being contested by the enemy cavalry, not for long because... Um, so our opponent is now using our strategy against us of denying the healing point. But three cavalry versus one infantry could win if our cavalry did not come in and save the day. So now you can see my units engaging at Delta. Now I know that I have the Chevron advantage and there is a um, enough amount of units here that I'm able to fight back and be able to contest it. Now let's pause it for a second. This maneuver is important. So we have a lot of chaos going on on Charlie. And Bravo, the point is being contested, but we are winning there. The healing point is being contested. The Charlie is pretty much a loser. We are attacking from the north, but there isn't much looking there. But by contesting Delta, by sending in a force that it looks like it's going to get lost, will force our enemy to do three things. One, they will either send a counter force that is able to push back uh, the units I have here, which means they will lose the engagement at Charlie. If they don't send any forces, they risk losing Delta. If they keep the forces over here in a balanced manner, the contest, the contest is going to continue and our point advantage is not really going to shrink. So this was an important gambit that this happened. Otherwise, the original plan was to go behind and hit the point Charlie. So now we have our pipemen who are protecting Joel. Just look at this damage. Look at this beautiful amounts of damage over here. Unfortunately, there isn't much infantry support. One thing that I noticed is that we're lacking. We're lacking an organized attack ability. And we should have been instead rallying and attacking the enemy instead. So now we have archers, dogs, and more infantry coming into the Fan Delta, leaving Point Charlie in an attackable manner. Because they have lost engagement on Bravo, now we have gained the point gain advantage 2 to 1, despite controlling only 2 points. And now we are controlling this engagement over here. Thanks to the buffs, we are taking very little damage while dishing out a respectable amount of damage to both the dogs and this infantry. So we see another mistake made by um, our opponents, which they should have all have came in from the side and hit these units in the back. The goal here must have been to, um, uh, should have been to eliminate these units as soon as possible. They're not getting any support. I suppose they expected more infantry to come, but no, this unit is a commando unit. It's just was standing there. And the mistake I make here, I should have disengaged the third unit and held these uh, infantry away, letting me contest the points without any infantry inside but it still gets the job done you know the job the goal is to prevent the enemy from gaining any more points you don't need to capture the location you just need to contest it now one mistake that the opponents make they try to push us back to point bravo while still losing the point contention so we have a few infantry spawning uh, and going to point delta because they have seen the enemy is not sending enough reinforcements to take back and to eliminate the units there giving us enough time to come in swoop in and attack it's a very narrow game the margins here are very very small it's only 200 point difference which can be closed in just a few seconds of capturing the right points but point cont contention is what's preventing it. Oh, we see some uh, cavalry cruising around. Oh, that was a nice charge. Took out more than half of those dogs. 
Oh, the cavalry has been routed. Let's see if they can recover any damage off of that. But this allows our infantry to surround and push back. So the line is moving back to Charlie, as you can see. The situation at Delta, we have lost Delta, and now the red team is gaining three points a second. This is how important contesting the points are. Now, my assistant that was uh, coming over here, Lithia, he noticed that it was too late. So instead, what he does, he blocks the street, covering his retreat. He is Sula Infantry. He knows he can take these guys. There's just very little they can do to do damage to a Sula. And so, he just holds them off. If they, if they try to engage, he will just do more damage and will, will win eventually. And if they retreat, he can take Delta. So now, he pushes himself, puts himself in a position where he's able to contest Charlie. Because almost all of their units are on this side. While this side only has the dogs and one sword infantry. While three sword infantry are coming their way. And now we have my infantry spawned from uh, Echo. Bravo is still in our control. The point difference has shrunk to merely 130 points. Sun Tzu team will need to pick this up if they, uh, if they hope to keep their advantage. Oh, and the other team has managed to quickly recover against the Lithia's attack and form a defensive line. Now, Charlie is being attacked from two sides. The, the, uh, the goal here is to take and contest Charlie. The longer our point is contested, we can either contest Delta and Charlie and win, or we can try to take Charlie. So let's speed this up and see how the lines are moving around. That's a bit of back and forth, back and forth. We have a lot of micro happening here. But now, let's see the power of Caesar and buffs. Now that we have achieved numerical advantage, they're able to move in. Flanked one unit. Now flanked it, flanked it in the back. Route number one. At the same time, the elephant is coming in and contesting the point. This forces our, our opponent to move from the Bravo attack to the Charlie to defend against the Salt. The Salt has does about 50% of the remaining health of the Sula infantry. Our units at Bravo have managed to recover and are now defending against the cavalry, you know, going back and forth uh, in terms of healing. First, we're contesting the healing point because it is much closer to us and the enemy is healing over there. We also see that the enemy has decided to um, uh, attempt to cap the base, but this leaves Delta completely undefended, meaning our cavalry is able to contest it. And so, our opponents pay a dear price for trying to contest the base. So now we're gaining more points thanks to that quote, really takes the advantage there. Now, trying to take the base is a horrible idea in here, because with 5 seconds people are able to call back, it's just very easy to call back against any organized resistance. And so, because the units are so divided, now I'd like to point out something. Look at these battle lines. The previous well-organized battle lines are all broken. The healing point here is com being contested by the pikes, the dogs, and our javelins. Our glaives are on their way back. The, the bravo is being defended. They're about to assault bravo. But the delta, cavalry doing their job, seizing the opportunity, while our opponent have tried to cap the base. Because why? They got bored. That's, that's just a bad idea. They should have been defending Charlie. So let's see what kind of price they're going to be paying for that. Right now they're being completely kicked out of Charlie. The only thing left here is the Scipio Infantry. And this is where Scipio Infantry really shines because it cannot be routed thanks to the Oath of Perseverance. Now Delta has been neutralized during that time. So there are three units that are trying to uh, cap the base. They realize it's not a good idea. And this is one of those things. The base capping is something you either go all in or all out. 
half-assing it is just never a good idea. It just leaves units away from the front lines. And should the Charlie be captured? So right now we have these two units over here. Yeah, that's very nice. But if Charlie is neutralized, bam, base is locked. These units are completely useless. They're not doing anything. <clears throat> and now Delta is currently being contested. Charlie captured. And that gambit, those two units could have been the difference. They could have been the difference in winning or losing Charlie. They could have at least helped Delta. That would have prevented uh, the huge loss that's happening over here. Right now we have three and a half points. So that is significant. That's very significant. So we also have much bigger killing power. As you can see, our opponents have killed 6,000 people, but we have killed 8,000. This means we have the Chevron advantage. And the Chevron advantage is getting more and more significant. We even have, well, our opponents have like one, two players with three Chevrons and only two units there. We have a person with four Chevrons, multiple people with three Chevrons. The difference keeps on growing. The killing power means you can play the long game. And now we enter the long game where it begins to matter. At this point, the individual units of our team are considerably stronger, are becoming in general considerably stronger. We have very nice engagement by our javelins surrounding the enemy from multiple sides, forcing them to rout. But this, we managed to capture and lock Delta. At this point, we are able to capture four points, and uh, that, uh, one of the biggest issues is that this inability to hold the line and stick to that one strategy is what doomed uh, the other team, I would say. Not because they're any worse players, but simply because they did not commit to their strategy of holding those points. They did have the advantage. All they needed to do was hold, but they did not. Now our cavalry is scouting around, just walking around. But right now, four points are taken. The game's almost over. This is um, this is a pretty uh, pretty straightforward from here. But this was a very good game, a very nice, a very nice engagement. I have some, a few minor engagements here and there, but this match is pretty much over. Well, thanks for joining me, and I will be seeing you next time. Yeah, after this one, yeah, it's kind of not really changing a few engagements here and there, but the game is pretty much uh, done. All right, next up, we have Oasis, the final game of the finals.